everyone. Welcome to today's episode of Pro. Whoa, what's what's happening? Oh my gosh, I think that was I missed a day of Prime News. Earthquake 5.0. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Prime News. Our first story is about Mario Maker 2. Nintendo has upped the course upload numbers from 32 to 64. In fact, not only did they up it from you know uh, what it previously was which many considered a pretty low number they said they will be increasing it as well in the future now first mario maker game handled this a little differently and then eventually you were able to get up to a hundred course uploads i have no idea what the upper limit's going to be here for mario maker 2 but it was disappointing that launch that it only allowed 32 but now you get 64 and more in the future Famitsu sales are in for this past week and it's important because it includes the launch of marvel ultimate alliance 3 however Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 had kind of a heh, whatever debut at number 6, moving about 9,000 units. Now, it is notable, however, that this is actually the best launch of Marvel Ultimate Alliance in Japan, so it actually did better than the first and the second game, but still not exactly great. Probably not going to see a big long tail sales in Japan. Marvel is just not as big in Japan as it is in some of the Western world. Uh, Mario Maker 2 fell to number 2 with only 46,000 units in sales. And what's interesting is that Switch itself actually dropped in sales as well. And is not only below last week, but below the same week last year, moving about 45,000 units. Now, we do know next week Fire Emblem 3 Houses is releasing, so the numbers should bump up, although it'll be interesting to see how many people are holding out for the Switch Lite in September, or maybe for the new revised Switch that releases next month. But for now, I do expect Fire Emblem 3 Houses to have some sort of impact on sales, and at least get them up to maybe what it was last week, which was around 55,000 units. Uh, the rest of the top 10 looks pretty stock standard. However, it is notable there's like three baseball games in the top 10, or two versions of the same baseball game. Uh, PlayStation's just killing it with baseball stuff, so uh, that's decently popular in Japan. In fact, I think the new baseball game launched on PlayStation 4 to 175,000 units, which, hey man, baseball's popular in Japan, so uh, imagine what a baseball game could do on Switch. I mean, it would be nice if 2K or somebody else would actually make such a game, but anyways, let's move on. Now, speaking of sales, one thing we should mention is the UK, because we do have uh, kind of sort of numbers. They don't really give numbers. They just give you a top 10 list. And Marvel Ultimate Alliance actually debuted quite well at number two. Now, it is notable that debut is only 66% of the actual debut sales for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2. However, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 was a multi-platform game, whereas this is a single platform and it's a platform that never had Marvel Ultimate Alliance before. So actually the numbers are really impressive for just a solo platform game. I'm about to see how far uh, it dips down the charts in the future. Super Mario Maker 2 went from number one to number three. And hey, Crash Team Racing kind of shot back up to number one and was helped greatly by the Amazon Prime deals, which in the UK, they had a nice deal for Crash Team Racing. So no surprise that that shot to the top of the charts. But hey, pretty cool uh, top three since they're all on Switch. Nintendo and Tencent announced a partnership quite some time ago, and on August 2nd, they will be hosting a press conference. Obviously, this press conference will be taking place in China, and it is going to discuss the launch of Nintendo Switch into China. This also means that Nintendo obviously must have some of their games approved to be there at launch, because that seemed to be one of the stipulations they were waiting to launch Switch wasn't the hardware, it was getting games approved for mainland China outside of Hong Kong. And so now this uh, is going to be a big deal for Nintendo. For us here in the U.S. and other parts of the world, it might not matter so much, but China makes up a massive video game population, particularly on mobile and PC. Uh, and heck, I think at the World Gaming Championships, China took home four of the six trophies. Like, gaming's a big deal in China. And Nintendo wants a big piece of that pie, and they have a poor portable system that very well might be endearing to that market that likes to play games on their phones. So uh, this is just something to pay close attention to because sales of the Switch in China should be, unless Nintendo and Tencent botch it, uh, very big. So uh, it could actually become one of the biggest markets for Switch, maybe even bigger here than in the United States, potentially. So uh, it's just something for Nintendo to pay attention to. It also, if you're someone that's into Switch sales forecasting, 
Uh, this could massively impact the sales of Switch and its potential. I know some people think Switch might be able to get to 100 million units lifetime to date in, you know, three, four years. But, hey, if China sales explode, it could be even higher than that. Uh, Nintendo has not really been able to officially release their products in China for quite some time due to a video game ban. So it's going to be interesting to see how this works. Tencent is the biggest publisher and creator of video games in China. Uh, so it's a natural partnership for Nintendo because Tencent's going to know how to penetrate that market. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, maybe we'll have some news on it, uh, at least for launch, like when it launches, if we can get some sales figures, that might be kind of cool to look at how it's doing in China. But otherwise, uh, unless there's some new games being announced by Tencent, uh, there that's going to be coming to the rest of the world. Uh, I don't really know that we're going to talk much more about it, but hey, Nintendo's officially going to China, likely later this year, press conference on August 2nd. Hackers are again doing what Nintendo don't, at least in regards to Switch. Homebrewers, specifically the Homebrew crew on YouTube, have showed off custom themes on Switch. And this is huge because a lot of people have been wanting custom themes for quite some time. Personally, I'm not really into them, but these themes are like animated and go to crazy things. Obviously, there's a lot of copyrighted stuff uh, you're kind of seeing on screen right now that Nintendo would never be able to get approval for. Uh, Stranger Things 3, Back to the Future, all that stuff. But uh, just the fact that this stuff can exist and can be made by hackers and homebrewers uh, is just kind of another shot at Nintendo not providing such things and the amount of money they can make, even on a dollar per theme. Uh, and we're not even looking like it doesn't need to be this crazy like these themes fully customize the whole ui they don't have to go quite that far to be successful but it is something that uh the hacking scene is doing that nintendo isn't hacking scene added folders as well for games a long time ago and i think all of us can kind of agree that nintendo's operating system on switch could use an actual update to add in new features I actually really like the cleanliness of this OS and I don't really care about themes as much as other people, but adding things in like folders and uh, more ways to custom organize your games, I know they added some ways in uh, not too long ago, but it's still not exactly what people want, uh, would be ideal. I, I, I think they have the base of a great operating system there and now we're seeing what hackers are doing with it. Nintendo just needs to be willing to do it themselves. Uh, we know Nintendo is kind of slow to adapt these things. However, it's weird because, like, I can put things in folders on my 3DS. I don't know why we can't do that on Switch yet. It's baffling to me. And Nintendo could actually make money on themes if they just put up a theme shop like on 3DS and, and just charge, you know, one to five bucks per theme. But, hey, uh, what do I know? I mean, I, I'm, I'm just a, a guy in his basement talking about video games. Tomorrow at 6 a.m. we will finally learn our first real details on Rune Factory 4. Marvelous will be hosting a live stream on their Japanese YouTube channel to talk about Rune Factory 4 special, which, fun fact, I did actually play that at E3. They wouldn't let us record footage of it, but it was really good. If you ever played Rune Factory 4, you obviously know that you're getting a quality experience and seeing it in HD on Switch was just a really, really great. Uh, I, the combination of like a Harvest Moon kind of thing with traditional RPG combat, it was just a really fun and fascinating experience that I personally really enjoyed uh, just in the little time I spent with that demo. But here's the thing, they're gonna give out more details on Rune Factory 4 Special, that's not a surprise, that does release this year, but they did say the first details on Rune Factory 5 are coming and they've been very tight-lipped ever since they announced that Rune Factory 5 is coming quite some time ago. Uh, so it'll be interesting to find out. Obviously, Rune Factory 5 isn't going to come till next year, so this would be a 2020 title. And I don't know how many of you guys are really interested in the Rune Factory franchise, but because I really enjoyed this at E3, I've, I've been trying to pay attention and follow up on the news for what the, the, the new sequel game is going to be. And right now, I have no idea, except for more Rune Factory. So uh, be sure to uh, stay tuned maybe to tomorrow's Prime News, where we might be able to give you a nice summary of what the new Rune Factory 5 information is. Our last story is one that I actually already covered in the individual video, and that's why I put it at the end. We're going to be talking about Joy-Con Drift and Nintendo's fixes of it, so if you've already seen my video on it, you don't really need to watch any more of this, although I appreciate if you do. In fact, if you're going to stop now, just drop a like, leave a comment, and share this video with friends. But uh, the Joy-Con Drift issue is being solved by Nintendo, and I fully expect them to make a public statement on this sometime this week, if not next week. Uh, Nintendo sent out a private internal email to their customer support in North America, and it basically says, hey, look, fix Joy-Con Drift issues for free. 
out of warranty, don't require a receipt. We've actually had some people admit that they, ever since I put up that video, they got a hold of Nintendo support, and that's basically what they told them. They're fixing, you know, two, three, four Joy-Cons at a time. Nintendo's apparently covering shipping there and back. It takes about two weeks currently right now for the repairs. They didn't ask for any proof of purchase or warranty. They do not care. Nintendo will fix all Joy-Con drift issues for free. Now, we do know the fix right now is to just put new joysticks in. That's what Nintendo is doing. And if these joysticks aren't redesigned, the drift issue is just going to come back. But Nintendo will also fix those if it happens. Because Nintendo actually loses money by replacing the broken sticks with the same style of sticks that are going to break. What the bigger news out of this is, is that this is Nintendo recognizing that Joy-Con drift is their fault. It is a hardware defect or a hardware issue and because of that this now gives me confidence that nintendo is eventually i don't know if it's going to be in any switches this year but eventually going to be permanently fixing the joy con drift issue with a redesigned joystick i don't know when this is going to happen maybe it'll be in the new joy cons in october maybe it'll be in switch Lite or the redesigned switch switch that comes out next month or maybe it's something nintendo's only recognizing now and we won't see fixes in products until next year it's going to be interesting to uh, see what nintendo does this also means i think if the issue happens to switch Lite, they would probably fix that for free however there's things like with the switch Lite where uh you can't play your system because you gotta send the whole thing in that's not fun uh now they're even being really kind about it as well one user in particular uh, in the comments on the video said that you know they're sending like three or four pairs of joy con in but they actually are letting them do it over two shipments so the user doesn't ever have to go without a pair of joy con uh, so they can continue to play their switch so Again, Nintendo support's being really great about this, and what's even crazier in this is Nintendo is telling support if customers contact them for a refund on the Joy-Con drift fix they've previously done, especially if it's happened again, Nintendo is just to give them a refund for that repair and then fix their Joy-Con again for free. That's right. This is full-on admittance from Nintendo, at least internally, that Joy-Con drift is their fault. So expect a public statement on this eventually. Uh, I don't know that you're going to see an apology, uh, but at least Nintendo informing consumers on a mass scale that, hey, look, uh, get your Joy-Cons fixed. We'll take care of it. Our bad. Uh, and they're probably going to end up announcing a redesigned stick at some point in the future to give to re rebuild consumer trust. Uh, and you can always trust whenever those sticks arrive, whether they're announced or just ghost dropped in, uh, that Spawn Wave will be right on top of it dissecting those uh, joy cons and looking at the sticks to make sure that nintendo actually is holding up to what appears to be um sort of a faint promise they're not saying it but by recognizing it's a problem you as naturally can assume they're going to fix it so hey joy con drift been talking about it for a while we talked about fixes we've been talking about how big this problem is well the fact that nintendo is saying this internally that's lets you know that nintendo kind of is realizing that joy con drift is a much bigger issue than they probably initially realized so uh I don't know, take that for what you will, but Nintendo clearly knows that this is their problem. All right, folks, so that's going to do it for today's episode of Prime News. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, share this video with your friends. Let's grow this Nintendo Prime family together. Again, I apologize for not really having a Prime News yesterday. I had a lot of family stuff going on, and you know what? I didn't really promise there was going to be an episode. I'm trying to be consistent, but at the same point, I'm trying to live my life as well. We all have lives to live. Uh, I went swimming yesterday, if you if, if you really must know. I'm swimming with the time I would have used for Prime News because I like to swim. Swimming is fun. I mean, how else am I going to meet Ariel from The Little Mermaid if I don't keep swimming? Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Swimming. Sw okay. I know. Cringe. All right, folks. Catch you in the next video.